Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to this 11 o'clock service of worship. I'd like to call this a special mission Sunday because we have a, uh, a guest with us today, Dan Christie and his, fa and his family. Let, let me get this right. Ashley, Emma, and Christopher. It's wonderful to have you all today. Later on, Dan will be talking to us about his call from God to go to Papua New Guinea to serve the Lord. So I hope that you have a chance to talk to Dan later and uh, as, as we uh, partake of some good eats in the back. So I hope that you can stay for, stay for cookies later on. Uh, a few announcements. A few days ago, uh, four of us, actually five of us, went down to PNC Park to check out the new, uh, the new improvements that they've made to the park. Uh, Stacy Tarr and Russ Claypool, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Buddy Dunlap and Linda Costanzo and I went down for a great afternoon and uh, we got to see the section where we're going to sit for Faith Night. So if you haven't already, we would love to have you join us for Faith Night on June 4th. Uh, tickets are, uh, are still available. And uh, we will be sitting in section 128 if you know PNC Park that well. Uh, so I encourage you to come with us and... Be a part of a great night of baseball, hopefully. Maybe we'll have Jesse, we will have Jesse with us, so hopefully we'll have some luck there, our diehard pirate fan. And uh, here's, hear testimony from the pirates and staff on how God has touched them in their lives. Also, wanted to remind you, June 5th, we will be having... Uh, Jubilee Sunday, that's the Sunday, not only is it Pentecost, but we celebrate those who have been members of this church for over 50 years. So uh, I hope that you can join us for that celebration as well. Uh, men's group yard sale. You, are you starting your spring cleaning yet? I have a little. Eh. But uh, I hope that you will uh, do a little spring cleaning and bring whatever it is that you don't need anymore down here to the church so that we can, uh, we can sell that as well for you. Are there any other announcements today? Friends, as we start our service of worship, I wish you that the, may the peace of Christ and the love of God in God's abundance be with you today. Please join me in our call to worship. All who are thirsty, come. All who are hungry, come. Rich and poor, young and old, neighbor and guest, come. Friends, please join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. God of all glory, on this first day, you began creation, bringing light out of darkness. On this first day, you began your new creation, raising Christ Jesus out of the darkness of death. On this Lord's day, grant that we, the people that you created by water and the Spirit, may be joined with all your works in praising you for your great glory. Through Jesus Christ, in union with the Holy Spirit, we praise you now and forever. Amen.
Lord is not mean-spirited or vengeful. God is gracious and merciful, always willing to listen to our prayers and to what is, he hears what is in our hearts. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We believe we are the only ones who carry heartache around with us. Forgive us, Lord, that we do not see or embrace the desire of those around us. We think we do not have the words with which to offer hope and healing to strangers. Forgive us, welcoming God, for not having the courage to run up to them with your grace. We can see ourselves that we need to devote all our time, our energy, our resources, our lives on keeping up with others. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, Jesus Christ is a forgiving God. He forgives us and welcomes us into his kingdom. Everyone who believes in him who is hungry or thirsty will be given water and be fed by the Holy Spirit. Friends, everyone who believes in the resurrection power of, re of Jesus and repents of their sins is forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. be with you. So please pass that peace one to another. be right with you. We're so glad to have you and your family here today. Friends, this is Emma. Say hello to Emma. Emma. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> right. So you and your family are very brave, you know. You're going to be going to a new country and meeting new people. And so people who are called by God, like your dad and mom and you and your brother, 
they need special support from people like us to help you serve God in this new place. And so one of the ways that we do that is we help, not only do we pray for you, but we donate money to good causes like yours, you know? Um, at Easter time, I don't know what it's like at your church, but at Easter time, we, we collected money for what we call the one great hour of sharing. And that's when people donate money to help people who are in need. So I want you to read this sheet of paper. Can you read this out loud? One great hour of sharing. Mm -hmm. What else does it say? Right, $321.20. That's how much our friends here and others donated to the One Great Hour of Sharing to help people like you and your family help other people who need them, like the poor and people who are hungry and people who haven't heard about God before, and now they're learning about God because of God's call on your life to tell them about Jesus. Another way that we do it is this. This is an offering envelope. And our friends here, every week, they, I, well, not anymore. You can bring it to church, but you can also donate online because that's what we can do now. Uh, we donate online money to this church to help the ministry of God here in Cowansville and in Catanning and in all other kinds of places in the world. So this is what we do, and we are so glad to help you and your family as well. Because Jesus says this, or actually James says this in the book of James, every good and perfect gift is from above, meaning it's from God, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. So every good gift and every good talent, like the talents that you have and your mom and dad and brother have, they all come from God, and I hope and pray that you continue to use your gifts in a brand new way when you move, okay? Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for Emma and her family who are going to serve you in a brand new place. We pray that all the gifts that we give and all the prayers that we pray be heard by you and offer blessing to the Christie family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming up today.
would you like to come forward? Friends, it's not too many times in our lives that we get to experience someone else feeling a call from God to do a new thing in the world. And so I'd like to introduce you to Dan Christie and his family as they talk about their call into the ministry. So Dan, if you wouldn't mind using the mic there so our friends online can see and hear you. Okay. Hi, uh, like you said, I'm Dan Christie, and this is my wife Ashley, my son Christopher, my daughter Emma, and uh, I'm not a public speaker, so please bear with me. Uh, but uh, we have partnered up with Ethnos 360. Uh, they're one of the largest missionary sending organizations in the world, and um, their goal is to get the gospel and the whole Bible in its entirety into people's hands in their native language. So uh, the missionaries in Papua New Guinea have their work cut out for them because there are 800 different languages in Papua New Guinea. Um, so the missionaries there are hiking out into the jungle. They, they're living with these tribes for three to four years just to learn the language and to develop an alphabet because none of these languages have a written form. So they're developing alphabets and then the language itself for these people and teaching, their, teaching these people how to read and write their own language. And then uh, they translate the Bible into that language and stick around to plant healthy churches. So the whole process takes 15 to 20 years. Um, and, and living out in the jungle, they need houses built out there. And when the church does start up, then they need a church building built and they, their equipment needs maintained. But uh, these people tend to be a little more academic and uh, lack some of the hands-on skills that I have acquired over the years. Uh, I was in residential construction for a very long time, and now I'm in maintenance in Rosebud with Rick Tarr back there. And uh, so I have all the skills that they, they need and that they ask for. And um, there was a few missionaries on furlough back here, and they presented a video uh, that they're gonna show here. And after I seen the video, I thought there's no way I can say no to this. So. We talked about it, we prayed about it, and we're, now we're members of Ethnos 360, and by the end of this July, we should be on a plane going over there. But to get there, we need a lot of support. Uh, I think we're, as of right now, we're about 15 to 20,000 short for the year just to go, and uh, we'd, we'd like this to turn into 20 years, but we have, we're right now we're at two years, we're going for sure, and we'd like to see it turn into 20. But with that, we need long-term support, monthly support. Uh, so we need prayers and we need money. And uh, so that's what it comes down to. So I uh, appreciate it. And if we could play the video, it'd be great. Thank you. Missionaries just aren't pastors and Bible teachers. There's a whole bunch of different uh, ways that people can serve as missionaries. We're in Papua New Guinea to serve Bush missionaries here with technical services. For many, many years, missionaries struggled. They spent so much of their time maintaining and repairing their equipment and their homes, which took them away from the real reason they were here. Which it became obvious that it was a large need across the entire field. With all the time that is poured into the church planning aspect, fixing something that gets broken, that doesn't get done because of the pressing needs in discipleship and church planning. A lot of it is communication and helping them solve the problems if we can remotely. The other thing is actually going in and helping missionaries, whether that's with their initial house building. A lot of that, they don't have the skills for. So those of us who do, if we're able to go in and help them, it helps a lot. Getting ready to build our houses so that we can be based in the tribe um, because we want to learn their language, we want to teach the gospel in their language. Our goal is to help missionaries do their job better and it's a lot of times being in really remote places, it's really hard for missionaries. Their skills aren't necessarily the more hands-on side. Okay, what is my experience in house building? Basically nil. It comes to swinging a hammer, I still can't pound a nail straight. So now we're using chainsaws, which are dangerous things. You know what, I'm just not prepared for that. I, I've never used a chainsaw before, so this is the first time I'm learning. There are guys out here and we're able to ask them, as we're preparing for house building, 
what do we even need to build a house? We have people that can guide us and we have people that can really tell us what are the safety things we need to look out for so we don't chop off our limbs um, trying to build our houses. We're going to have people coming in with us who are skilled builders and back in their home countries they were builders and they're going to come with us and yeah without them we don't have a chance. It's such a, a peace of mind that we can uh, focus on what our job is. We were trained to learn language and to figure out uh, culture and grammar and, and translate and we're equipped for that but I am just not equipped for um, building a house and so I'm glad there are people there help me with that and I don't need to worry. So while our primary focus is to see churches planted here in PNG, we also need to maintain and look after these support centers and keep them up and running so that we can do the job of supporting the tribal church planters and their ministries. This is the base. We had caught us here at Lapilo and we can support more Bush missionaries out at Bush. So I'm very happy to be here in Lapilo to work with our missionaries. In Papua New Guinea, where the old bush, uh, missionaries go out through the bushes in other centers and work, we need to help them and support them. So here at Lapilo, we have generators, we have a water system, we have over a hundred buildings on center, and then of course the grounds that all need maintaining and constant upkeep. As I look at the field right now of Papua New Guinea and what needs there are, there's many needs in maintenance and in construction, tech services, all of that. We really need people who are very skilled in those areas and able to train the Papua New Guinea citizens here. Another huge need is people who can train management. So training people in management and the ability to lead crews. The Papua New Guinea people, those that work with us, have a heart to see their people reached with the gospel and, and they want to be a part of that. And this is a huge way in which they can be a part of that. So it is, it's crucial that we bring expats over here with the experience and the knowledge so that they can train and mentor and teach them to do those roles uh, alongside of us. Yeah, I, I worked here almost nine years and I worked in a warehouse. There's some missionaries came here and they learned me how to make uh, different jobs like plumbing and maintenance and building and learned me how to manage a uh, warehouse. We need more missionaries coming PNG, and we need some more skills from them. But we need them to come and help us, and they can give us more training. When I work here, I was very happy to support this uh, gospel in here and go throughout. Yeah, I'm happy to work here with the mission. So I hope you can uh, get an understanding now of why Dan felt called by God to do this mission in a new place. So in the, next, in the days and weeks to come, I hope that you will prayerfully consider donating to Dan's ministry. He is uh, right now employed at Rosebud Mining, and I heard that you got a promotion recently. Is that right? A little bit. <laughs> but given that, uh, he will have to leave his job, right, from Rosebud for two years to do this mission, this call from God. So our session prayerfully considered and has decided to uh, match your donations dollar for dollar up to $500 to Dan's mission and ministry. So I hope that you will prayerfully consider doing that as well. Uh, Dan, how uh, I, I thought that they could make their checks out to us and we would forward that to you, but how would you like that to be done? Right, okay. Um, so I would say for right now, if you would like to donate, donate to us here, <coughs> excuse me, at, um, at the church, and uh, we make a notation on the memo that it's for Dan, uh, Dan's ministry, Dan Christie's ministry, and we will forward that money on to Ethnotes 360, the mission agency that will be sending him. So uh, let's have a word of prayer. 
Holy God, I pray that you be with us today as you speak to those here and to those online who feel your call, maybe not to go to Papua New Guinea, but feel your call to represent your kingdom in Dan. And we pray that for his ministry, that you bless his family and that you bless his support. Send your Holy Spirit with him and guide him and his family each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dan. So friends, uh, today's scripture lesson is a snippet from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's part of the Beatitudes. And it's with um, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Hear now the word of the Lord. Blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, uh, I am a music lover. I've loved music my entire life. I sang with my dad in church. They forced me to go to piano lessons. Yes, they forced me. It was not a love of that. Because as you know, I've said before, I don't like school, and so I don't like to be taught, didn't like to be taught anything, and so it was boring for me to practice. Right, Deb? It's kind of boring. <laughs> I know. So am I. I'm trying to get back into it. But I like several different genres of music. I don't like, I don't stick to just one. 70s and 80s classic rock. I like that. R&B. I like contemporary Christian. Old hymns, too, by the way. Love old hymns. Uh, and I do like some classical music. Not all of it, but some. But the genre that I seem to be drawn to is country music. And one of my favorites is Tim McGraw. And so Tim McGraw, it has this iconic hit from 2015, you all, some of you may know it, it's called Humble and Kind. And the most meaningful set of lyrics that I like in this song is when he sings this. Don't take for granted the love life gives you. When you get where you're going, don't, get, don't forget to turn back around. Help the next in line. Always be humble and kind. Now, being humble and kind to another person, it, it seems like a no-brainer, right? It's what we're supposed to do. But in the real world, we don't always hear a lot of people being humble and kind to one another. Have you ever noticed when you watch a 30-minute newscast these days, if you, can, if you can even last 30 minutes these days, you don't hear anything good, really, positive news until you get to the very end, like the last two or three minutes. The last two or three minutes is devoted to stories of inspiration and kindness shown to humankind, but like I said, we can't even last 30 minutes of news these days to even see about and hear about that. But in this passage from the Beatitudes, Jesus describes someone who is humble and kind as a person who is merciful. Now, a merciful person treats those who are in need 
with sympathy and loving kindness. <clears throat> Again, to you and I, it's a no-brainer to treat people this way. But when Jesus told his followers that blessed are the merciful, it was a drastic thing to say. By him saying that people who, that people who were merciful would be blessed, he was actually overturning a behavior of people that had an acceptable standard of not being humble and kind. The Romans despised the thought of even showing anyone pity. People who considered themselves to be stoics, that means that they could endure pain and hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. Those kind of people, they might offer help to someone, but they'd be very suspicious of them. The Pharisees, they were harsh. They were harsh people in their self-righteousness. They thought they were great. They thought they were examples of God's law. They showed little mercy to anyone. Besides, from their perspective, someone who was suffering deserved to be punished for their sin. No wonder in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrites. He said, you give a tenth of your spices, but you have neglected the more important things of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. In case you didn't notice, Jesus took great exception to their attitudes and treatments toward the poor and marginalized of society. Now, when I think of examples of people who show mercy, I think of the Red Cross. I think of the Red Cross because they have mercy and they show that merciful spirit in the way they execute their ministry in the world. Mercy lays claim on us whenever and wherever there is suffering. The Red Cross, they have pity for and help every creature, not just humanity alone. It avoids the, act, the acting cruel or using uh, cruel speech when they execute their ministry. They don't speak badly about people. They don't swear at them and put them down. The Red Cross, they reject all that. And it has mitigated the harsh treatment even in the penal system and continues to work towards transforming that. So it begins, it, it, it brings to the fore the injustices that are in the world and it resolves to show mercy to those who not only have physical needs but also spiritual needs as well. They want to restore people's faith in God and humanity. Therefore, even those of us who are not called to the mission field, like Dan and his family, can be resolute. We can be resolute in our prayer and financial support for them as they go and serve Christ in his name. Our prayer and financial support for Dan's ministry is how we can demonstrate the mercy of Christ to he and his family. It's how we show our love and support 
for our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Dan and Ashley and Emma and Christopher, God has called you. God has called you to use your spiritual gifts in construction and labor in his name to truly serve him in a new place. It's a place that is diverse linguistically with over, and I checked this, 851 different languages. It's also one of the most rural countries in the world with only 13% of the 8 million population living in urban areas. Most of its population live in communities that are as diverse as its languages. It's one of the least explored countries culturally and geographically. There are numerous people who live in groups there that have never even had contact with the outside world. Now, to be honest, on the surface, it seems that Papua New Guinea is a country in a state of decay, wouldn't you say? Most of us in this room, we would resist the call from God to go and serve at a place like this. But like you told us in our session meeting when we first met you, you can't not do this. You can't ignore God's call when it weighs so heavy on your heart. And so I'd like to share with you a reflection on the mercies of God from one of my favorite pastors and theologians, Dr. Paul David Tripp. In his book entitled New Morning Mercies, Paul says this, one of the stunning realities of the Christian life is that in a world where everything is in some state of decay, God's mercies never grow old. They never grow weak. They never get weary. They never fail to meet the need. They never disappoint. God's mercies never, ever fail. Form-fitted for the challenges, disappointments, sufferings, temptations, and struggles with sin within and without are the mercies of our Lord. Sometimes they are awe-inspiring mercies, rebuking mercies, strengthening mercies, hope-giving mercies, heart-exposing mercies. Rescuing mercies, transforming mercies, forgiving mercies, provision-making mercies, uncomfortable mercies, and God-revealing mercies, truth-illuminating mercies, courage-giving mercies. So there will be times in the mission field where you will be reminded of your weaknesses. But remember that because God has called you to serve, you will provide, or God will provide you with power and strength and courage to go out into the mission field and serve in his name. You have chosen to be humble and acceptable of God's call for your lives. Remember that God's mercies in your lives will never grow old and it will never run out. May God's grace and mercy be yours always. Amen.
friends, this is the time in our service when we ask for prayer requests. We love to hear joys as well as concerns for those loved ones and situations in your lives. We love to hear how God has been working in your life this week as well. Uh, we are trying something new. We have included in your bulletin a list of prayer requests, and we will continue to do that. These are from the, um, the prayer chain that is online on email. Uh, are there any others that you would like us to pray for that are not listed here today? Uh, yes, I'd like to have prayers for a guy I work with, Barry, who's having a lot of health issues. Diane, one one of the persons on the prayer list is our niece, uh, Brian, or, uh, Tammy Ramsey, and we want to report that she's out of ICU in a step-down unit and hopefully doing much better. That's great news. Thank you. Alex Claypool is on the list, but his tumors are bleeding, and they are, they're giving him radiation. So we'll just have to keep praying for him. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right over here, buddy. Brent called this morning. He's been having uh, trouble with his uh, sciatic nerve, and uh, he's in, in a lot of pain. He can't seem to get relief, so he wanted to be put on the prayer list. Thank you. Are there any others? Oh, in the corner, Charlotte. Oh. <laughs> I should have. Hi, it's a joy to hear the choir this morning, and especially Debbie and their solo. That was beautiful. <laughs> of course. You can applaud local talent. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> Clapping's allowed in church. So are cookies. Are there any others? <clears throat> Friends, as we go to the Lord in prayer today, I ask that when you hear me say, your kingdom come, that you respond by your will be done. Let us pray. Lord God, because Jesus has taught us to trust you in all things, we hold to his word. Where nations budget for war, while Christ says, put up your sword, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. When countries waste food and covet fashion, while Christ says, I am hungry, I'm thirsty, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Where powerful governments claim their policies are heaven blessed, while scripture says that God helps the powerless, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Where Christians seek the kingdom in the shape of their own church, as if Christ had come to build and not to break barriers, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Where women who speak up for their dignity are treated with scorn or contempt, and where men try hard to be tough because they're afraid to be tender, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Where our prayers falter, our faith weakens, our light grows dim, we pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Father, comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for those listed today 
And Lord, in addition to those, we pray for health and restoration for Barry, Tammy, Alex, and Brett. Father, we also thank you for the blessings that you have given us through music in our friend Deb. We pray to the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Father, give all those here today and online and those who are not able to be with us, give them courage and hope and despair and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord God, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our ears to hear it, our hands to serve it, our hearts to hold it. This we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as you know, we do not pass the offering plate here, but we do leave it in the back. And we ask that you donate to this ministry so that we can continue to serve God here in this place and beyond. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. With humble and grateful hearts, we bring our offerings and tithes to God. Friends, please stand for the doctor. Friends, let us pray. Loving God, you give thanks for the ministry of reconciliation to which you call us in the name of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Accept these gifts for your mission to heal all creation. May they be a testament to your love for us as we share them in love for you. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
friends, out, friends, as you go out into the world, remember that Jesus has loved us so that we may love one another. So go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.